Okay, I had a couple of topics and requests this week and a couple of other things I wanted to talk about, but uh, I actually got uh, a letter, well, not really a letter, it was like a message, uh, which I didn't even know how to actually send messages on YouTube channels. Uh, I found out, by the way, all you got to do if you want to drop me a message is go to the uh, About section on the channel itself, and then you uh, click on this little message icon thing, and... It goes from there, but anyway, one popped up, and it, it notified me in my email, and uh, needless to say, the message wasn't from a fan uh, by any means, shape, form, or fashion. I didn't bother to reply to it. Uh, in terms, by the way, on leaving comments uh, on videos, is the only reason that I actually screen them before they come out is not because I censor uh, someone who has an opposing viewpoint or someone who doesn't like me. It's, it's usually because of... Uh, uh, personal reasons that I've censored them. Like I've had a couple of people that, uh, that, and these are people that actually know me, that knew me from AA, because I did send videos to some of these people who gave me a real hard time when I were down, when I was down. Uh, but but I've seen people try to post my address. Uh, how they found that out, I'm not really sure. I rent from somebody, uh, and I didn't ever post that on any social media accounts or anything unless they just I don't know how they found it I don't really care but I didn't want that on a YouTube channel and I had someone post my work address one time which is it's almost kind of funny I mean I don't really know what company policy would be about me doing this but I, I know my immediate boss uh, very well and uh, all he wants to all he cares about is getting the job done he doesn't really care about what you do in your personal life uh, and, and neither does the guy that I rent from here that's sort of using this living room area as a storage space. It was just like if, every time he tries to clean his house out, he has to dump extra stuff here. He knows what I do. It doesn't bother him. But my boss would probably, if you called him up on the phone and said, you know, you got an employee who's out here making these videos, he'd probably say, what the what the fuck, lady or, or sir or whatever. You know, I've, I've got a business to run. I haven't got time for this shit. But, you know, it, just in the... Uh, it was just a few personal things like that that makes me screen these comments. It's not because I won't publish. I mean, if you if you leave a comment on the video and you say you fucking suck, L U L Z, I mean, I'll 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 publish it. I don't have a problem with it. I don't believe in censorship really. I just don't want I don't want certain personal items like where I live or where I work out there because I do deal with the public largely where I work. Though I mean, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. But that's the only reason why I screen them. But anyway. Uh, just to get that out of the way. Uh, anyway, I get this letter, and I think it's from a... It's definitely someone who knew me. It's funny, he didn't have the guy. He, he accuses me of being a coward and everything in this, but he doesn't leave me his name. But he mentioned Central Group, which is... Uh, I knew all those assholes at that particular place. And so if he's one of those scum fucks, it, it doesn't surprise me that he would write a note like this. But anyway, it's enough that I'm actually going to do a topic about it. It's not about his message, but it's about what he says in his closing line. Uh, let me click over here. Uh, so the first thing he does, wait, he, I'm not going to say his username because I tried to look up channels and there's several people with that name, so I don't want him to get trolled or something like that. But uh, the first thing he does is he says that I'm a worthless, low-life, scumbag, uh, motherfucker. <laughs> he uses a few more uh, choice terms here. In fact, he's ranting and raving like a little kindergartner uh, here at first. He says a few uh, sexual things that, uh, which, you know, it's like juvenile immaturity here. But then here he goes. He's like, uh, I remember you uh, when you were coming to Central Group and you were drunk all the time and uh, you know, and I tried to help you and, you know, you're showing me that you're an ungrateful son of a bitch. You're showing me that you don't care what the program of Alcoholics Anonymous tried to do for you. You're quite an ungrateful bastard. I remember that one night you were in a meeting and you were drunk and you were crying and we were laughing at you. All of us was laughing at you. Well, now, wait a minute. I thought you said you were trying to help me. I thought you said that I was ungrateful because I didn't appreciate the help you gave me. Now you're saying you were laughing at me. So which one is it? I bet you probably say you're only here to help other alcoholics and you laugh at them, you know, when they're down on their luck or when they're intoxicated. I don't actually remember crying in a meeting, uh, to be perfectly honest. I can remember being really depressed and I can remember being really drunk. I mean, I, you know, really drunk. I can't remember everything, but possibly. I mean, who knows? Who cares? 
Uh, then he goes on about, you'll never get any help from me if you ever were in pain or in agony or down on your luck. You can look the other way for us because none of us will be here for you. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't consult you fucking assholes if you were the last people on earth. I mean, I would I would I would blow my brains out before I would actually think about consulting any of you for help. I mean, uh I guess you haven't gotten the point of what I do on here on YouTube if you actually think I would come and turn to you for help. But that's actually pretty funny. I guess, I don't know what he's trying to say. Hey, he wants nothing to do with me? Great. I mean, that's good news. Uh, <laughs> never help you again. Then he has this little thing here. I'm going to skim over a couple of more lines. He's just more insults and more insults. Uh, then he has this... Uh, uh, this thing here, uh, it's another insult. I'm, I'm not going to read all this. It'd just be the word fuck over and over again and motherfuck over and over again. By the way, I'm assuming he has a lot of years in the program because he says here near the bottom that he uh, he's seen people like me come and he's seen people like me go and we all end up dead or drunk or in jail. Well, it doesn't sound like you've gotten a lot of benefit from the program if you've seen all these people come and go. Uh and you're still acting like some little five-year-old having a temper tantrum who's just learned to curse for the first time. I mean, you know, anybody can say the word fuck every two seconds. It doesn't take a whole lot of uh, maturity for that. But by the same token, I mean, uh, aren't you one of these guys that's been in the program for a long time and you got like this uh, spiritual awakening as a result of the steps? You know, you've got this... Uh, uh, you know, this desire to carry the message. I mean, you're doing a real fine job of conveying that for me, actually, as a matter of fact. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, here's the last thing. This is actually what I wanted to touch on in this video. He says, you sit up there uh, on YouTube, and I don't give a fuck what you say about AA. AA's not going anywhere. AA's going to outlive you, motherfucker. And, uh... But there's no telling how many lives you've ruined by turning them against the only thing that could help them. Uh, well, you just got through saying you've seen people come and go and they all end up dead, drunk, or in jail. So, I, I mean, I don't, this YouTube channel's not that old. Uh, I mean, all these years you've been seeing people come and go and get drunk and wind up in jail. You know, I don't think this channel's doing that much damage, but, you know. And by the way, if you don't care what I say about uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, why are you writing me this rant-filled message? I mean, is this is this on your inventory? Is this something you got to do? But anyway, at the bottom here, he says, uh, you say there's no objective morality in all your videos. I've sat and watched every last disgusting one of them, but yet you turn around and you talk bad about AA people and you call them scumbags and lowlives and you call people all kinds of foul names up there as though you're sitting in judgment of all of us when only God can judge us for our actions, okay. <laughs> but you can't say anything bad about any of us if you don't believe in objective morality. How about that? Shove it. <laughs> Shove it, oh. All right, that's enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. But actually, I'm kind of glad you brought that up in one way because I'm actually going to talk about that because... I've, I've been asked about that in the past, uh, not recently, because I don't really uh, too often times talk about my personal beliefs and opinions to uh, to people in general. I kind of prefer to keep my own uh, beliefs, I guess you could say, or spirituality or religion, or however you want to call it, uh, to myself. But I've had people ask me that on more than one occasion, because I'll say something like there is no... Uh, really objective morality. There's no concrete absolute in morality. Uh, and inevitably, I get two types of people on that side. I get the type of people that'll say, well, then you can't make a judgment since you believe that. Or I'll get people that, that kind of have this attitude of, uh, they think because I say there's no objective morality that I'm promoting some kind of uh, completely chaotic, lawless world where everybody can just do what they want, where everybody can just murder people at random, where people can just kill little children, where people can just, you know, do all these violent, unspeakable things, and they, there should be no accountability for any of that. And of course, it's that's totally not what I'm saying. I mean, nowhere or anywhere at any time have I ever, that's Diet Coke, not beer, by the way, in case he's watching. <laughs> nowhere at any place or any time did I ever say I advocated for that. Nowhere at any time did I say, and just because I simply uh, have come to a conclusion that there's not a concrete morality, uh, that that means that everybody should just cast aside all semblances of order and all semblances of law and just start doing horrible things to one another. 
But it, it leads to a deeper question that I've had to discuss on that before because people have said, well, if you don't believe there's a morality in objective concrete terms, uh, where do you get it from? And, uh, and I'm not going to get too philosophical on all this because it can go on and on and it can get really complex. I mean, I was watching some, some people the other day on YouTube, they were talking about this thing called universally preferable behavior, which, uh, I, I don't agree with that. I don't believe there is such a thing as universally preferable behavior because that would apply to everyone everywhere in the world at all the time. Uh, even though there are some similarities within the human species, uh, I'm going to go philosophical with that. I'm going to have to drop it. So to answer the question about objective morality, well, the first thing I can think of right off the top of my head, because, you know, these kinds of questions generally... Uh, do, they, they do have to have detailed answers. I mean, I couldn't just sum it up in a couple of sentences. Uh, morality itself, or as, as society defines morality, let's go back in time. Uh, well, let's go all the way back to the Middle Ages for a moment. Uh, and it's not going to be uh, the type of history. It's not going to be a total, complete history lesson. Actually, I'm just trying to make a point about something within the the time that the Roman Empire fell, which, you know, and I can start talking about the Roman Empire and we'll still be here tomorrow, but uh, the Catholic Church was actually the primary governing body of Europe at the time of the Middle Ages. Simply, it was the one thing that, that kind of held some semblance of fabric of society together. I'm not saying it was great, okay? I'm a former Catholic. I, I don't have a lot of love for the Catholic Church. I don't bash people, though, these days who are Catholic. I used to be really vehemently anti-Christian. I'm not, well, we'll just leave that aside for another video. How about that? But at that time, it was the fabric holding society together, so it pretty much decided law and order. I mean, all the kings and all the all the monarchs, you know, pretty much answered to the Pope in Rome. And around that same time, you can look it all up on YouTube, if, I mean, on the internet, if you want to, uh, or in the history books, you had the uh, division between popes and anti-popes. You had popes that were, the pope had moved all of Rome, which is where the central hierarchy existed, to Avignon in France. And you had an anti-pope over here in, that stayed in Rome, and he said, you know, this pope in France, he's not the true pope. He's not preaching the real gospel according to the way the real God, you know, the way God intends it. You know, it's me that's doing that. And you had like great divisions in the Catholic Church at the time. Now, all these people, mind you, uh, all these people believed in the absolute authority of the church. They believed in the Bible. They believed in the absolute uh, doctrines of the Gospels and all of that. And yet they were at war with each other and at each other's throats. And people did die over this, uh, over literally what was right, what was wrong, what was scripture, what was not scripture. During that same time period, you had... Uh, you had your Franciscans who pretty much were preaching, you know, everybody should be in complete poverty and everybody should give up all the riches and everybody should just kind of, I don't, I don't know, strut around from village to village and get more recruits. But you also had a splitting off from them. And you got to remember the Franciscans, just like the Pope and the anti-Pope, they all were following same God, same idea, same Bible, same gospels, all that. They just had a completely different, unique take on it. Now, your Pope and your anti-Pope would have said to the Franciscans, these guys are totally insane. They're not listening to God. This is not what God intended. And they would have, at one point, even wanted to burn all of them. But you had, from the Franciscans, split off there, uh, another section of people called Dolchinites. All right, Dolchinites wanted to be poor like the Franciscans, but at the same time, they believed it was commanded by God that they murder all the rich people. So, you know, if you were a fat, wealthy bishop and the Dolchinites were in your neighborhood, you were probably going to get murdered. Now, all these people are praying to the same exact God. They're, they're reading from the same exact Bible. Well, I don't know about reading so much. as A lot of it was oral at the time. Uh, only the educated people really could read during the Middle Ages. The Bibles were kind of kept chained uh, to certain walls and certain places, kind of like the way the Vatican operates today with all of the stuff in one place. These people were praying to the same God. These people were following the same teachings, supposedly, uh, yet... And they would have all said they believed in an objective, absolute, concrete authority and a concrete morality. And yet they were killing each other over this. It's kind of funny how the killing part throughout history when it comes to religion and God and morality, somehow or the other, that kind of takes a back seat. I mean, you know, 
uh, religions don't ever seem to have a problem telling, they seem to get kind of united when it comes to telling people, you know, you're not supposed to have sex and, and do, you know, anything that's kind of pleasurable. When it comes to murdering each other over conflicting doctrines and what God intends, uh, it seems like the, the, the killing thou shalt not kill sort of takes a back seat there. But the point being, okay, I'm leading up to that, is that from that time period to now, Think about society. Think about the way it is. It has changed. Think about the the laws, the rules, uh, the idea of a divine right of kings that, that lasted throughout the Middle Ages, throughout the Renaissance, even and beyond. The idea that a king was appointed on earth by God to rule, and that the king's word was sacred. Okay, think about uh, how different the world has been within the past say eight or nine hundred years in terms of the way the society looks at things the way society punishes people uh, the way that society treats people in general i'm not saying we live in a perfect just society by any means shape form or fashion i'm not saying that our present society is not completely totally fucked up because i really do believe it is but in all of this and i'm just i'm just doing this with europe and you know with europe in the United States, I guess I, I can throw that in on this one. I'm not talking about worldwide, where you've had uh, uh, warring factions and ruling factions and changing factions, all believing that they're following uh, the commandments of whatever God they're worshiping and believing in the absolute rule of objective morality, of an absolute morality, of something set in stone that this is right and this is wrong. Uh, what is set in stone of what is right and what is wrong uh, changes all the time. It changes with every historical period. It changes with every, with every new government. It changes with every new society that arises out of an old one. Uh, even in my own limited lifetime alone of 40-something years, which seems really minute in the, in the space of things, when you look back throughout how, how long our history goes, I mean, we can go all the way back 10,000 years with this if you want, because I read a lot. I'm good at trivial pursuit. That's all it's good for. I'm just a, a wellspring of useless information with a lot of that. But my, uh, even in my lifetime alone, I've seen the morality of society kind of change. Now, I'm not saying better or worse on, on what I've seen. I'm just saying that it, it does, in fact, change. Actually, when it comes to a historical commentary, you really shouldn't object, interject too much in the way of opinion on, you know, are we better off now as a people or are we worse off now as a people? You could ask five different people from five different uh, backgrounds the same questions. You're going to get five different answers, which then right there and of itself hints to me that there can't be an objective, concrete thing written in the dirt that says this is 100 percent moral. This is 100 percent immoral. There's nothing in between these two that uh, that can ever be moved, that can ever be changed, that, that can ever be grounded in anything. And uh, I do find it actually kind of funny uh, that you got a guy who's writing me this letter full of uh, every kind of ugly thing you can think of who's telling me that uh, he's better than me because I don't believe in objective morality, and he does. Now, I'm going to say this since he brought it all up. Uh, if he goes to Central Group, uh, which has everything from sex predators to child molesters to, uh, to just crooks and con artists and everything in between, uh, I, I, I'm kind of uh, wondering where you get off feeling that you have some corner or some market on objective morality uh, when, you know, from the place that you're coming at me from. I mean, are you saying that I just simply am not allowed to have an opinion because it doesn't line up with your narrow-minded worldview uh, of this world where if you drink, you're an awful person. If you struggle with drugs, you're an awful person. Because, I, I, in fact, I find it funny that AA can talk about, a member of AA can talk about objective morality because I don't see anything that, in my own definition of morality, is moral about AA. Okay, I don't see anything moral about an organization that, that looks upon people who drink themselves to death and commit suicide as you know, the reason he's dead and I'm not dead is because, you know, it's by the grace of God. You know, I was chosen by God to live and he was chosen. He was just rejected and forgotten about by God. I don't see that as very moral. Uh, I don't see uh, an organization that allows predators and, and allows bullies and allows scum fucks like the guy who wrote this letter to dominate meetings and, and, and exert authority over the lives of people who are simply looking for help. I don't see that. Okay, as a very moral thing to do. 
I mean, from my perspective of morality, that's why, that's what ultimately I mean when I say there's no objective morality. It doesn't mean you should cast aside all laws and just start murdering everyone, you know. I mean, I've kind of heard that argument uh, back during the time when I was really angry and I was more mixed up in, uh, when I was pretty much atheist. And, you know, if you want to become an atheist, go to AA. I mean, they, they're good at it. When you get browbeat with the word God enough in AA, it makes you question everything. It wasn't until I was away from AA that I actually found my way to what I'm doing now uh, in my own personal life. But I, I used to get that, that same type of argument, you know, if, if you don't believe there's a God, where do morals come from? I mean, morals come from within, actually. Uh, in my opinion, in my personal opinion in life about myself, for instance, some people would say, you know, your parents and society dictate your morals. Uh, may be true to some extent. It may be true with some of the conclusions I've drawn in life. But a lot of the conclusions I drew in life, I drew by my own experiences, by my own dealings. You know, I mean, it does something to you when... Uh, when you do end up on the very bottom of everything and people in AA like this asshole just pointed out when they laugh at you uh, or when, you know, you're at the bottom and you have no friends and everybody and everything, it feels like has turned their back on you. It alters your worldview dramatically. But, you know, at one point in my life when, uh, when I didn't really have anything at all, it was actually an interesting and liberating place to be because it kind of gave me an opportunity to uh, evaluate life from almost like a, Kind of like I wasn't emotionally attached to, to myself any longer. I was just kind of analyzing everything that was happening to me every day. And uh, I'm at 22 minutes. I didn't expect to talk this long on this one. So in one way, I guess I should thank the son of a bitch for writing me a letter like that. It gave me an opportunity to kind of give you... A, you know, I could talk more about this topic, but it would turn into four or five videos. You know, I could outline, uh, you know, because I'd have to, I could have to get into world history, and I'd have to get into other things, and I'd have to get into philosophy, uh, and, and a whole lot more than really is what's required for the purposes of this channel, which is to really just debunk quackaholics. But anyway, I, I'll see you guys pretty soon.